Hi, my name is Nathan with Sub Zero Nitrogen Ice Cream. Today we're going to use liquid nitrogen to do some fun experiments. What do you do if you have a question? How do you get an answer to your questions? Well, sometimes you could ask a teacher, or you could ask a parent, or you could ask a counselor. You could even do a search on the internet. But what if it's a question that you can't find an answer to very easily? Or what if you're not sure about the answer? How do you figure out how to answer your question? The way that we do that is we use a method called the scientific method. The scientific method is a process for us to be able to figure out how to answer our basic questions. And we follow a couple of steps in the scientific method. The scientific method starts by, number one, asking a question. What question do we want to answer? And after we figured out our question that we want to answer, we determine what the hypothesis is. Now, hypothesis is just a fancy word for guess. We make a guess. We try and guess what we think is going to happen. After we've made a guess of what we think is going to happen, then we can design an experiment. Once we've run our experiment, we can observe the results of the experiment. We can see what happened. And once we know what happened from our experiment, then we can come up with a conclusion. The conclusion will tell us if our hypothesis was right or wrong. Based on what our conclusion is, we know that we can find out if our guess was correct, and then we know the answer to our problem. We have different states of matter. Now, if you think about water, water can exist in different states. Now, states of matter may be a solid, a liquid, or a gas. I have in my hand here some ice cubes. Now, an ice cube, when water is frozen, it becomes a solid. And so in this state of matter, the ice is a solid. Now, if I warm it up or if I get some water out of the sink, now my water is in the liquid state. And if I get my water really, really hot, it will turn into a gas. And so that becomes a gaseous state. So I have in the container next to me, a container of liquid nitrogen. And I'll show you what that looks like. Now in this bowl is some liquid nitrogen. That nitrogen is below negative 321 degrees Fahrenheit in order for the gas to turn into a liquid. As the liquid warms up, it turns back into a gas again. One of the most important principles of physics is the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law is a relationship between the temperature and the volume of a gas. The ideal gas law tells us that if the volume goes up, the temperature goes up. Or if the temperature goes up, the volume goes up. And vice versa, if the temperature goes down, the volume goes down. So I have a question for you. Is the ideal gas law really true? Well, let's think back to the scientific method. The first step of the scientific method is we ask a question. So the question is, can we prove the ideal gas law? Well, the second step of the scientific method is that we come up with a hypothesis. Now, my hypothesis or my guess is that as the temperature goes down, the volume of my gas will go down or the size will, of the gas will decrease. So then I need to come up with an experiment. Well, let's think about an experiment that we can run. Well, I happen to have a balloon in my hand and I can fill this balloon with a gas and we can run an experiment on the temperature of the gas in the balloon, and we can see what happens. So I'm gonna fill the balloon with some gas. Now I'm gonna take this balloon, and I'm going to get the gas really, really cold, and I'm gonna use liquid nitrogen to do that. Now I'm putting some liquid nitrogen on the balloon to cool down the gas inside the balloon. And what do you see happening? What do you observe? What's happening to the balloon? Well, the volume of the gas inside the balloon is decreasing. So now I have a very, very flat balloon. The volume of the gas has decreased to the point that it's completely flat. So based on the observations that we made, our conclusion is that, yeah, the ideal gas law is a real thing. Well, can we prove that again? Well, here's another idea. What if I take my flat balloon 
that has very cold gas inside of it and warm it back up again. What do you think is gonna happen? What's your hypothesis? Well, let's see what happens. If I take my balloon and I'm just gonna hold it higher in the air and I'm gonna let it warm up, what do you see start to happen? What do you observe about this balloon? Is it starting to fill up again? So now that my balloon, the gas inside the balloon has gotten back to room temperature, the balloon has returned back to its original size. The temperature in the gas allowed, because the temperature went from low to high, the gas expanded again to fill out the volume of the balloon to what we originally had. Now we proved the ideal gas law works if we start with a gas at room temperature and then we get it cold and we warm it back up again. Well, what happens if we start with a gas that's already a liquid? What if we start with a gas that's already really, really cold and then we warm it up? What do you think is gonna happen there? My guess is that the liquid is going to expand, turn into a gas and get bigger and bigger and bigger. That's my guess, that's my hypothesis. So let's run an experiment. Can you think of an experiment that we can run to prove this? Well, I happen to have a bottle here and I have some liquid nitrogen, some gas that has gotten so cold that it's a liquid. Well, what if I put the liquid into here and then I see what happens with the gas inside the bottle. So I'm going to put some liquid nitrogen into my bottle. All right, so now there's liquid nitrogen inside this bottle. Now, our hypothesis was that the gas is going to expand. Well, how do we know if the gas is expanding in this bottle? Well, I just so happen to have another balloon. If I put the balloon on the top here, we can see what's happening with the gas. So let's put a balloon on the top of our water bottle and see if we can tell what's happening. All right, well, what do you observe? What do you notice about the balloon? Well, the balloon is starting to fill up. The liquid nitrogen in here is getting warm and turning back into a gas and filling up into the balloon. And if I put this in some warm water, we can speed up the process. Our balloon got so big and so cold that it exploded. Now we talked about the states of matter and we talked about water, we talked about gas, and we've done some really cool experiments with how the ideal gas law works. Well, let's think about the states of matter for other things up besides water and for gas. Well, what about something like a gummy bear? A gummy bear is kind of a solid. It's a little squishy, but I would call this in the states of matter a solid. Now, if I take this gummy bear and I get it really, really cold, what do you think is gonna happen? We can use the scientific method again to make a hypothesis and a guess. Well, the question is what happens to a gummy bear when it gets cold? My hypothesis is that the gummy bear is going to get really, really hard. He's gonna turn into more of a solid. What do you think is gonna happen? Well, we can run an experiment. We can take a gummy bear and we can pour liquid nitrogen on it to get it really, really cold and we can see what's gonna happen. So we're gonna take the gummy bear, we'll get some liquid nitrogen in our bowl. and we'll put some gummy bears in the liquid nitrogen. We'll let them freeze in the liquid nitrogen. Well, what do you think is happening to the gummy bear? Well, if I take a gummy bear with these tongs and I take a look at it, what do you think? Did the gummy bear get any bigger? Did it get smaller? What do you think happened to it? So how solid is that gummy bear? Well, let's take a gummy bear and drop it into this tray and see what happens. Ah. Uh -huh. That gummy bear became so solid, it was very, very brittle and it broke into a bunch of pieces. Now I have another question for you. Can we use liquid nitrogen to create some tasty treats for us to eat? That's what we do at Sub-Zero. We use liquid nitrogen to freeze cream to turn it into something tasty. We turn it into ice cream. Would you like to try that experiment? For this experiment, I'm gonna take some cream and I'm gonna use liquid nitrogen to turn it into ice cream. 
So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some cream and I'm going to pour it into a bowl. So now that I've got cream in my bowl, I'm gonna add some flavor. And then in this case, I'm gonna add some raspberry flavor to my ice cream. It's actually black raspberry. So we're going to add some liquid nitrogen to change the temperature so we can change the state of matter. We're gonna turn this from a liquid into a solid. So now that we've added some nitrogen, we'll stir the bowl to help the cream freeze. And just like that, we've made ice cream. Thanks for joining us for all these experiments using liquid nitrogen. That's it for today. We hope that you can use some of these principles for like the scientific method to answer questions in your everyday life. And you can continue to use science to answer questions or create tasty treats that you can make in the kitchen. We'll see you later.